You are watching the biggest, the largest. You are watching the highest and the greatest African spiritual platform. My name is always Queen Hadash. I am the spear of destiny. Call me the world star number eight. I am the true bloodline of the Anunnakis with evidence and with certificate. We keep hearing about the church. The church is getting to an end. People are saying they will destroy the church. People say there is no Christ, there is no Jesus. What is it about the church? That's what we are going to delve into today to see what people have to say or those who have delved into Christianity and the Bible has to say. I welcome you to Revelations, the biggest spiritual platform. Okay, I welcome you, my beautiful people and my awesome subscribers. Today we have one of our brothers here on set. He's Prophet Hagen, who is going to talk to us about the end of the church. That's a huge topic. Let's welcome him. Papa, we welcome you. Today being your first time, you have to introduce yourself to our viewers. They make this platform the biggest, so you pay obeisance to them. Introduce yourself to us, whatever you are. We, we are ready for anything, even the devil himself. <laughs> we are ready for yeah. him. So introduce yourself and let's see what you have for us. Thank you very much. Welcome. Um, please, um, Bob Quisi, Prophet Bob Quisi Hagan, um, head pastor of the New Church Convention, Ghana. And I um, also have to express my appreciation to be here and also viewers that you're also helping the channel, the Revelation channel, to go beyond our our bodies. And we are really grateful to be here at the same time. To Welcome to Revelations the Biggest. Okay, so when you say you are Prophet Hagen, what kind of a prophet are you? Um, somebody who defends the truth and, and makes sure that the truth is what needs to be adhered to. What is the truth? The truth in the word, or to say the divine truth itself is all about the Lord. The Lord himself is the divine truth. Who that is the are, Lord? The Lord God, Jesus Christ, that we are talking about. Jesus, which one? We have about six Jesuses in the Bible. Which one are you talking about? I'm talking about the one that um, came to sacrifice himself and also be able to have his disciples to go ahead and preach the word. Sacrifice himself where? Like, when we talk about the crucifixion, yes. Yeah, so, I wouldn't say sacrifice, but somehow the crucifixion. And through his uh, crucifixion, you and I now can have an, an access to God, you know, because now the divine has taken flesh and been able to unite his human with his divine. So, the so before Jesus Christ came, we had nothing to do with God? We have much to do with God. But so then, how come? Yes, God has to also take flesh to dwell among us and also be able to bring much enlightenment to, to the people. Are we all created by one God? Of course. Are we all human? Created by one God. Of course. We are all created by one God. We so how come he, he looked like others and does he hate us? Where did we come from? Looking like others. Well, from my experience, God looks like me. We, we know God is a black person. Okay. Uh -huh, and, um, new church, new church convention. This is our spiritual understanding that we don't see the Bible to be literal. Okay. We have the spiritual understanding of the Bible. So tell us a bit about spiritual understanding of the Bible. Yeah, the Bible have a spiritual understanding. We have the celestial, spiritual, and the natural understanding. So when I take the Bible like this, this on the literal level. But when I'm reading every word, apart from the episodes, most of the, all the books have a spiritual meaning, a deeper meaning. Give us about three examples. Okay, like from the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. An angel or a spirit who is learning in the world of spirit now knows that when the Bible says God created heaven and earth, it means your soul and your material body. Okay? And then they say the earth was void and when they say the earth is void, that means where we don't have knowledge is. It's like the Gang people who say bull, a big hole without knowledge. So we don't have knowledge. And the creation itself is about the reformation and regeneration of our spiritual essence. It got nothing to do with the physical creation, but all is about our spiritual creation. And also like, in the Bible, where was God when the serpent came to test Eve? Where was God? God is omnipotent, omniscience, and omnipresence. So that means everywhere at the same time. 
but then he, he didn't interfere when the serpent was coming in. So that means spiritually, God has given each and everybody an idea about freedom of choice. So when you say God, which of the gods are you talking about? I'm talking about? about the Lord God Jesus Christ because at times from the like from the beginning we might say God, but as he manifested himself in the in the in the New Testament, I would say that when the Jewish doctrine came to an end, the representative worship came to an end, then he revealed himself. You said Adam, yes, and Eve, yes. That time, where was Jesus? Um, all those the story concerning Adam and Eve are symbolic. Spiritually, angels don't see one person, Adam or Eve. When you say Adam, corresponds to divine truth or knowledges that we acquire from the word. And then when we say Eve, is the divine love that we acquire from the Lord. So Adam and Eve are not two entities. Physical bodies no. like we know. No, no, no. Really? No, there's nothing like that. We will come there. But now let me ask you this, then we get into mm -hmm. maybe your topic or a few yeah. randoms again. Now, your church, what's the name again? The New Church Convention. The New Church Convention. Yes, please. Go so, on. the New Church Convention, is it Orthodox, Charismatic, or Pentecostal? Where do you belong? Oh, Orthodox. Or Spiritual Church. Where yes, do you actually Octodos, belong? Orthodox, but mostly we preach to develop the spiritual essence of the individual in the church. Everybody that comes to church must have the essence of developing his or his spiritual life. Because we believe... The Lord does not judge you because he says your work shall follow you. So that means everything that you are doing to upgrade your life is something personal that you have to have with God. We don't believe in a, a universal judgment that one day the world is going to destroy it. And, but our judgment will take place whilst we leave this material world. We read the word of spirit three days after our life starts again over there. Then our judgment starts. But judgment is not going to happen here on earth. But we have some glimpse of it. But not like the whole world is going to destroy like the Christians are saying. Yes, because they, they, they are having the literal understanding of the word. They are not into the spiritual understanding. So most of the time they believe that the world is going to end, but the world is not, not going to come to an end because ah. we are here as a seed bird for heaven. We develop to become angels gradually here, and then when we read the word of spirit, we continue. That's, that's why in our tree language we say, above war. It gradually tends you, you know, it makes you become much more angelic. So it's, it's a personal spiritual development. Uh -huh. so, so it's not about angels with wings? No, no, no. You are an angel. Is there any entity like that? No, no. We have not seen anything. So if somebody like tells me I should come for an angel, I should run? Don't run because the angel is you and me. The angels are... No, like they, they, to they tell us that they, we, they have wings and angel Michael, angel Raquel. You hear this every day. Yes, but I know from the spiritual world. There's wings, nothing like that. No, wings corresponds to your state of understanding and speed. And the speed. And the state of understanding. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. so, so there are no entities like Michael and, and Gabriel. We have communities in the spiritual world with birth those names, but they are not one person. The whole heaven could be the angelic community of Michael. The whole of Nigeria could be a whole community of Raphael. The whole community could be another person, but it's not like one person bears that name. Uh -huh. So... In the spiritual world, we don't have names that we acquire here on a material plane into that world. But our characters will give us our communities that we need to be in. We are the biggest, the largest, the mm. highest, the greatest, the tallest, and the fattest African spiritual mm. platform. You are watching Revelations with Prophet Hagen and the Queen herself. Mm -hmm. So, um, when you die, where will you go? When we die, when I die... You, you, you. Yeah, when me. I die three days, uh -huh. there's a word of spirit ahead of me. My, my spiritual body will be resurrected into the world of spirit three days after. So when I'm in the world of spirit, I have my family members to come and meet me. I have my friend that I'll, I'll meet and then my life will continue again. But we have three stages. The first stage, second stage and then the third stage. The first stage is like normally where I die. If I have died at the hospital or if I have died through accident or I might see it happening. But then two, two people that I already know that they've already passed on into the world of spirit, they will approach me. But when I see them, my mind will record that mm, it's like you are dead. And they, they will tell you that you are dead. Because when we, di when we die, actually we don't have that realization that we are dead. Because we are alive still, you know. Uh -huh. So when we die, we w firstly we go to the world of spirits. The world of spirit is where everybody assembles him or self so that we can be a you can examine yourself. To be in paradise or you find your way among the hellish communities. So 
we don't die actually. Three days, everybody resurrects. Nobody dies. Like Jesus. Because he says, I'm the way, the truth, I'm the resurrection and the life. So he came to portray that. But it's something that is, is happening from the beginning of creation. Everybody that dies resurrect on the third day. So there's no point in time that um, God is going to say, okay, today is the day of judgment and everybody so has to So uh, the trumpet will sound uh -huh. and then uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It won't happen. The trumpet that is going to sound is the divine truth. That now that I'm, I'm here talking about truth, it's like a trumpet in your ear that you need to hear and then resurrect. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, but we don't have any... No, we shouldn't take Bible so literal and our spiritual life so literal. You see, that's why Christ was telling um, Thomas that, blessed are they that see, um, now that you see, you think that you can believe, but blessed are they that believe without seeing. Because it's like they want to have physical seeing before they can, they can believe and, and it doesn't happen so on So if, if it doesn't, it's not literal and it doesn't have anything to do with this physical life, mm -hmm. why won't you leave it for the spirit? Why do you keep preaching this to us? Yes, the preaching is very because necessary. Because the thing is not physical. So why are you telling me physical? It's, it's spiritual and physical. Physical in, the, in, the, in each motion, like when you hear the word of God, it helps you to regenerate, helps you to live a good life here. All right. But then when they, it depends upon the state that you are, that your spiritual eyes can be open to see the other realm. And it is very real. I wouldn't say that, oh, it is, it is not something that we can see. It's very real. We can see the spiritual world. Gradually, maybe through dreams and after the dreams, maybe when you're able to develop and alleviate, then you can have vivid information or vivid seeing into the world of spirit. It's very real. It's very real. Very real. That's one there. I wouldn't. So, so now you said um, the Christians find or see the Bible literally. Very literally. And so I ask where you belong. Like you, you, you don't see the Bible literally. No. The Bible but Christians see Bible literal. What's the difference between these two words, you and the Christians? The real Christian is somebody who firstly believes that the Lord God Jesus Christ is the Almighty, or to say Jehovah who has taken first to dwell among us. Okay? Some don't believe that he is. Those people in the spiritual world, or even as of now, we don't classify them as Christians. We are followers and believers. They are believers and not followers. Explain that to us. All right? Yes, the followers are people that believe the Lord to be God, the Lord Jesus Christ to be God, and they follow him. But believers are people that are outside. They can hear his word. Oh, he does wonders. Oh, the Lord, he heals, he resurrects. They believe his word, but they are not following. Like when the, the Lord came, most of the Jews, they were believers, but not followers. The, the followers were the apostles who came out from the Jewish religion. They are real followers, but they are not believers. The believers are the Jews who don't believe that the Lord is God himself or Jehovah who has taken fresh. So right now, how do we differentiate you? Do you are you a Christian? Of course, I'm a, I'm a Christian. And you're a because prophet. I'm a, yes, because so, I believe. So, so how do we differentiate you, mm -hmm. a Christian and a prophet, and the same Christian, your brother, mm -hmm. Christian, and your brother, a prophet, who you are saying he's seeing the Bible literally. How do we explain this? And what are the consequences for me? An innocent soul who is just watching or listening to a prophet preaching the Bible, which you know it is literal. I wouldn't know mm -hmm. as a soul. And I go there, I go to church. In my heart, I know I am worshiping God. Mm -hmm. And you are saying they are holding it literal. What are the consequences? You get it? What is the difference between you and the Christians, your brother Christians and prophets who are seeing the Bible literal? And those followers, innocent ones, what becomes of them? What will be the consequences? So when it comes to the consequences, it's not like you'll be being punished or because you don't believe that the Bible have an eternal sin that you are condemned, no. But the whole thing is, it, 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 it takes somehow to say a stubborn heart. Most Christians don't want to change from what they know to something else. Most Christians don't even make research about the faith that they are in. But when we, when we don't make research about what we believe in, that means we, we, we believe blindly somehow. So we need to go into it. So the question is, Christians now, also mm -hmm. stubborn, they don't want to learn, they yeah. don't want to uh, come back to, they, want to, they don't want to unlearn to yeah. relearn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I am asking whether there will be consequences. You say when they die, they will go back to school. Of course. So what happened to um, the Muslims? 
Our dear Muslims. As for them, they, they are not with your Jesus and yes, your... Yes. They are not even seeing the Bible to talk of seeing it later. Yes. What happens to them? Yes, our, our cherished brothers, the Mohammedans, they are also having a doctrine that the Lord is in it. Because the, the Holy Quran is comprises of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So, according to the Lord's divine providence and his divine wisdom, he implanted that Old Testament, do, teachings of the Old Testament and then the New Testament in the Holy Quran. So that... At the end of the day, we all can be one when it comes to believing that God is one. But when it comes to the teachings, the Lord didn't command the prophet unto him peace and blessing Muhammad to go and preach about the Lord. Because when he preached about the Lord, that means it is the same Christianity. So therefore, it is the essence of when Christianity fall. That's why the prophet came in. So that the prophet can restore that idea of oneness in God. Because it was in the year 325, that AD, that in Constantinople we have this, uh, the Nancing Conference, and then they changed the whole doctrine because of Aris. Aris was a, a very learned person, a Roman learned person who was about going about teaching people about God being, Jesus being a man and not God. So gradually they reduced the divinity of God to nothing else. Okay? So it was something that it was really worrying. And the whole world of spirit was getting so disturbed about that. And it, it is like the hells were really getting up into the heavens. So the Lord himself have to come down and bring in a new form of teaching. Okay, if they can't accept me to be God, then let's, let's find a way out. That is where the idea of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit came in. And, and it is because of this, the church came into an end as at now. You see, because this is church history. But it's all according to the divine providence of the Lord. So do you believe in Trinity? Yes, the Trinity I believe in, but not the Trinity of persons. When I say the Father, the Father is divine love. When I say the Son, is the divine wisdom. And then the Holy Spirit is the divine uses that comes out from the Lord. When you say Spirit, Spirit is your mind. So the Holy Spirit is the holy thought that you are having about the Lord that is operating in your life. But then it is very much abominable for you to think God, God is three, to say, because I, I watch some of your programs, some people are saying, God is a trapatal God with three hairs. Very, very abominable. When, I, when, when I'm hearing this thing, then the angels are all around, or spirits are around, they, they become shivering because such ideas don't enter into heaven. Angels shiver for what man say? Yeah, well, no, but it's like they become very disturbed when you hear them say... And you see them getting disturbed? Well, according to the, the mood. Yeah, the mood. According to the mood? Yeah, the wow. mood. Wow. Yeah. So they will tell you, no, this, they don't want to hear this because when people are saying God is three and they don't understand that, it is, it, is, it is Christ who is the embodiment of that trinity. Because what is in the Father, what is in, in God, what is in Jesus, I would say the Lord, is the essential soul. The essential soul is what you call the Father, that is no preaching in the Lord. So, the Kra no Muhammad, in the position where he? Oh, no, so no. I'm not sure what I'm saying. I'm not sure what I'm saying. Mostly, our brothers and sisters that were in the Asia, or to say the Arab, Arab nation, they weren't having the doctrine. So the Lord sent him so that he also will spread an, a knowledge, will spread some doctrine that will help them to develop. One Lord. The same Lord. So why is this Lord doing this? Eh? You give this Muslim seven with seven wives, uh, seven, seven ten virgin wives, mm -hmm. and you give the, the, the Christians uh, uh, where they can't have nothing, the same Lord. Why? Oh, it depends upon, because according to my spiritual understanding and my spiritual elevation or what I'm seeing or hearing from angels, when it comes to like marriage, you're talking about Muslims marrying enough or something. The Christians, you can marry one. I'm talking about having the heaven promise. Of course, of course, the heaven promise is, eh. is yes, but that is written in the Holy Quran. But even the, the, thereof, when a Muslim dies and is in the world of spirit, the one that is having one woman enjoys more than the one who is having more. I was sort of also. Oh, yes, because when it comes to marriage, it's between love and wisdom. But God does not, God, God is hey, not going to say the Lord. doctrine I would do? No, but this is um, divine doctrine that is being taught. So when it comes to this. So all this divine doctrine you are teaching us, what is your source? Your source, what is your source? Okay, we believe in the Bible, but most of the time too, when we have some, we want to have more understanding, we go to Immanuel Swedenborg. Immanuel Swedenborg, because Swedenborg spiritual eyes were open for 26 years. He had direct conversation with angels, spirit, and recorded so many things, okay? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But love after death, and we know about the Mohammedans heaven, 
God is not against concubineship, but even in, in our Christian sector, we, don't, we are not against concubineship. If only you can bring that concubine to your house, show your wife, it's okay, it's permissible. Mm. In our polygamy. doctrine, it's not, it's not polygamy in a, say, in a sense. It's not polygamy. You have the concubines and you have your wife. Mm. The concubine is not a married woman. Uh, so mm. you can bring the, the Anuzu home. Who did you have your wife? Oh, in your wife. And your polygamy is not a married woman. Concubine is not a married woman. So make it sure that you don't have to be a married woman. So you need to say that because we have um, certain um, understanding when it comes to the concubineship. Sebi sebi, if you are worried, Obana kwa yare, Obana yare ne bi ana unti mi muawa wo efi ye nyuma bi mu. Se samre muna Obana wo hano unimse wo mimpre ni no. Mimpre ni bichi efi ya. Emba di wamu bro. Emba ni bichi. Oh, it's it's in the Bible. We don't fight. Don't come and tell me David. No no no. We are we we don't like when it comes to concubineship and do we don't fight against those, but we are talking about. Because there's marriage in heaven. Oh, it's the reality. Yeah, the you reality don't want is that. Any emotional yes, comments. yes, but we have we have marriage in heaven. Mm. The marriage in heaven is between one man and one woman. Okay. But we are not against, like in the ancient our 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 dear fathers Moses and Moses is only had one woman. But when we come to Abraham, he had many other wives. But we can't condemn and say, oh, because Abraham have, and even Solomon and all those things because we believe concubineship is also part of it. But the whole idea is that how deeper respect, divine respect for your wife. Because with your wife, you are in conjunction. Mm. Uh -huh. But with the, the, with your, with the bonuses. Yeah, but that one all depend upon the wife. Marriage itself depends upon the woman. Do not, another man's another woman's fate is in another woman's hand. Right? Somehow, because the man yeah, out, 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 out of lasciviousness, men wants to have a lot of women and all those things. But the marriage Actually, it's between one man and one woman. You, mm -hmm. why? Now, bonus You are watching the biggest and the largest. So, mm -hmm. so where do you place the traditional worshippers to? Yes. We've come from Christianity to Muslims. The traditional worshippers. Moses. Nananum. Moses. Moses. Where do you place them? Most ancient form of worship. Mm -hmm. And then the knowledge of correspondence is applied here. What our ancestors were doing was like from the most ancient church where that everything that you see in the world represents something. So we have something we call like, sorry, a boar, and yet a boar, a boar, kind of boar, just like that, but a boar, some, a boar, you know, man, okay. So if you put stone down right now and you pour water on it, whatever you say will come to pass. And then you know, I'm going say, I hear you call, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to so in our in our spiritual understanding, we know stone represents truth. So when you say something that it comes to pass, you say ubuoni oh, ubuoni. That means what you said had come to pass. So with the knowledge of correspondence, I know that all oh, whatever our ancestors were doing was something that was what. Are you a universal worshiper? Yes, our our church. We don't. We you, you have to study everything, and then because everybody is invited. So in what has Jesus got to do with this stone and correspondence? Yeah, because he is the Lord Himself is that stone, is that truth, he is that truth Himself. So it's not about somebody being a traditional worshiper who who wouldn't find heaven. He's finding heaven because every religion leads a man to the good of life. There's no religion that tells you that oh go and steal. If you steal, you go to heaven. If you kill, you go to heaven. If you commit adultery, you go to heaven. But all forms of religion is telling us to live a good life. So to live a good life. Every form of religion leads to heaven. So it is not per se. It's only the Christian alone who is going to find heaven. Mm -hmm. Everybody is going to find heaven so long as you are living a good life. Uh -huh. Because God is not condemning people. Any direction that you come through, that you find the heaven. You just have to read there. Be, be make sure that you are there in heaven. But okay. then it is only the good of life that will save you. Okay, so where do you place Christmas? Christmas, mm -hmm. well, it's a, a special moment for God and his angels. So although we know the date has been changed and all those things, like we say pagan worshipping and all those things, but then, even if it's pagan worshipping, the, the, the alleviation of it is that men who have a thought of God and men who have the thought of divine love manifesting in flesh. So when it comes to Christmas, it's all about love, how the divine himself became fresh and then be able to express his love to people and then be able to Should we attach them? it to the birth of Christ and all that, the dates and everything that has to do with it? The Should date? we hold on to that? Somehow, because now 
is, is a Roman Catholic thing and it's a pagan thing. So, but they've changed it. They changed it to, 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 to bring, uh, to say, an awareness of Christ in our world. For us to change it is, is another issue. But then, like when you go to Ethiopia, they celebrate it on 7th of January. But when it comes to the Roman, they celebrate it on the 25th. Even when you go to Israel, they, they, the year ends in October. Of course, because they are following So what's the going on? Original. Why all this confusion? It depends upon the states. Okay, because where, which direction are we, the Christians are following? Are they following the Roman Catholic form of, or the Roman form of Christianity? Or they are following the, um, the Ethiopian form of Christianity? Okay, because from the beginning, Africans knew about the, um, the Ethiopian form of Christianity. Okay, but not the Roman. But then, through slavery and all this colonization, they brought in the Bible and then they gradually changed everything. But we can still go back to it. It's, it's never too late. So, so, so right now you have the Bible. Are you going back or you are standing still? The but, Quran is saying last, last. Ah, but like in the new, new church convention, we celebrate 7 January, but we don't condemn you if you are celebrating 25th. So you enjoy Bibi and it happen like that. See, most of the time, it's like the spiritual elevation is the most important. We have the knowledge, so, but how are the end of the world? I don't know. But, but maybe every organization has rules and regulations. Yes. The fact that you have lifted the Bible, mm -hmm. you are saying some people are holding it literal. Of course. Uh, what do you call that? Is that not judgment? No, it's not. It's not you judgment. You are doing something. You believe in it. I'm mm -hmm. also doing something. Somebody is pouring libation. Mm -hmm. You are saying they are all good. So why then are you saying those are holding the Bible literal? Because it, according it to, to you, we should leave everything. Is the understanding. Uh -huh. Because the literal understanding is, is what um, somehow it becomes a standing block to, your, to the understanding of the word. Because when you only believe in the literal, then at the end of the day, when something internal or spiritual understanding is being spoken about, you challenge, you argue. Say, oh, no, 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 no. That's not how it is. It is written this way. But then, as it is written, there's a spiritual understanding in it. But we don't condemn, as I'm saying, I wouldn't say, oh, the person goes to the church, the old church. Because we call them in the spiritual world, we call those people the old church. And then we have the new church. Ah? Of course. Spiritually, we are doing it, sorry. Yeah, because it is a belief. So, above for above for no share in some of our work, they know, oh, you are from the old church or oh. you are from the new church. Above for no? Of course. Because when you die, you have, they have to work on you. They have to also verify your belief. Sir? Of course. Because you, are, you can't go to heaven whilst your faith has not been verified. Are you contradicting yourself? No, 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 no. They have to verify and w to know whether you believe, like firstly, Jesus is God, he's not God. The Bible, do you believe it, that there's an internal sense? You say no. So there you'll be taught that, oh, the Bible have an internal sense. Because here, a lot of people don't want to learn and even when they hear this, they feel like it's nothing. Okay. Even this topic that we are talking about, is Jesus God or not God? Some say, oh, it's nothing. But it's something too. You see? So, so here, because of the division of thoughts and things, you can't compel them, say, oh, by force, this, do this, do this. But then the individual will also find his, his ways and means. When you read by the in one minute, tell me, Jesus, if he is God, he came on this earth. Yes, please. He became flesh. Yes. Did he, Marie, tell us a bit about his story or his life when he was here? a bit so okay. we get into your topic all right the lord jesus christ was born and i would say the incarnation of the word and it is not born through physical um connection or to say um a father that is from the earthly side but then is a spiritual insemination of himself into mary and then he, he, he gave forth he, he came forth okay so from the beginning being a baby he was like any other child learning Although the divine essence is in him, but then he needs to go through the usual trend of being born and being what? Have acquiring knowledges and then, and then developing. So for him even to become Christ, he's supposed to go through a lot of studies. Okay? So he is an entity, he is, he, is a, he is a human, but then he needs to develop himself to become who he is, the Christ. Okay? So to me, a lot of people don't um, believe that God can become a man or dwell among us. So don't worry about these uh -huh. people. Let's, worry. Yes, Let's talk about you. Yes, yes. See, you have a different concept. You mm -hmm. have a kind of concept at all. Mm -hmm. Different concept. Yes, yes. So tell us, Jesus, mm -hmm. at the age, 
um, 12 yes. to 30. Mm -hmm. Where was he? Yes, Jesus. And why did the, the Bible they didn't, they didn't say, anything, write, say anything about him? Yes. Tell us. Yes, because uh, uh, according to our spiritual understanding, our spiritual researches, we knew from the age of 12, he left Jerusalem or he left his parents and went to India. He, um, Martino, there's a, a, a learned man from India who came and also begged Joseph and Mary so that Ju um, Jesus would be part of him so that they can travel to India. And then in India, he started his learning because all is about learning. Although the divine essence is in him, but then he needs to acquire the knowledge. So, so he you, was in India. You he, believe in that story? Of course, it's real. So if you believe Jesus was in India, do you mm. believe he was crucified? Do you believe Jesus died at 31? Some say 31, some say 32. If you, you are telling me that Jesus was in India, yes. I want you to know, I want you to tell us about the end of him. Did he, was he crucified at 31? Was he married? Because those who believe that Jesus was in India believe he was married. He was at 60 something before mm -hmm. yeah, he died and buried. Yeah. So if you are telling me this, then tell us his end. Where do you belong? The end, actually, let's, let's, let's start from when Joseph passed away. Joseph passed away when the Lord was 30 years. Okay, so when he, he had information that Joseph had passed away, he came back to Mary. And then when he came back, and that's where he started his, his mission again in Judea, or to say among the Jewish nation. So it was three years of proclaiming the word in, in Israel, and then that's where the crucifixion took place. But a lot of people are saying that, oh, the man lived in India and he, ne he never came back. He did come back when Joseph passed away. When Joseph died, Christ was 30 years. So he came back and see Mary and then he continued his preaching over there. But then he was fully awakening to the Christ image that was in him. So when he came, he started doing the work, preaching and then reviving um, the state of worship that was in, in, in Israel because Judaism was in motion but then the new gospel that he was bringing was what is going to end judaism and also project the new christianity ideas of christianity in, into our world so judaism came to an end when on the cross the lord said it is finished and it was finished actually representative worship came to an end so they killed him like the bible say of course but the bible didn't tell us he went to india yeah, that's why. Are you that adding other, other, no, other, no. other doctrines to no, the it's Bible? No, it's not other doctrine, but then it's, it's according to the spiritual knowledge that we do acquire. You keep saying spiritual knowledge. Yes. You, acquire, you acquire it from where? What is spiritual knowledge? Because when I quote something that is not in the Bible, you mm -hmm. tell me you acquire from the spiritual knowledge. May we know where you get them from? Yes. <laughs> Most of the time, these knowledges might come through like um, when you read Aquarium Gospel. We have, the Levi was also instructed to write. You read Aquarium Gospel? Yeah, we read. We have to get The it. Bible said don't add, don't subtract. You didn't hear that part. Adding and subtracting. The adding, the adding is when, like, you want to, what is, even not all that has been written, or even all about Christ is, is written here. Means you read Apocrypha books. Apocrypha? Books. Oh, yes. We, we have the Apocrypha. Uh -huh. we, we read Apocrypha like. I'm asking you whether you read. Of course. Is it good? In the new church, we have the Apocrypha that has been explained by Emmanuel Swedenbo concerning the internal sense of revelation. Is Apocrypha books good? It's good, somehow. But what I don't really go deep into, but what I read most is from Emmanuel Swedenbo. Swedenbo it, gave it's, us... It's still Apocrypha books? No, his, Even if his, it is no, one. No, his is Apocrypha explained. Then he have Apocrypha revealed. Ah, Apocrypha explained, Apocrypha revealed. Reveal. Yeah. Apocrypha, Apocrypha, Apocrypha. Mm -hmm. It's the same book. No, we are He is get going further. Am I correct? No. So I because Apocrypha books explain or upgraded and the it still has something to do with Apocrypha books. Yeah, but and you, you, you mentioned one that you have read before. It's still the Apocrypha The one we, book. we use in the new uh -huh. church. Mm -hmm. Oliver is, is the ones written by Emmanuel Swedenborg, but maybe I might never know about others. But when it comes to Swedenborg's own, vividly he did explain from where to where about whatever is about written. those books. I wanted to ask why it was taken out of the Bible. Why was it? Why why was those books taken out of the Bible? Why? The those books that were taken, like like when the Romans or saying even in King James in those days, they wanted to bring in or compile a book. 
The ones that were written there, it was, I would say, all were much more literal. It was literal apocrypha that were, were being given. Okay? Like, the Spirit of God comes unto them, and then they get the explanation, and then they write. Okay? So we, we don't condemn it. But then, in the New Church Convention, we use the one that has been written by Emmanuel Swedenborg, because Swedenborg's own, he gives it the, the uh, he attests to it that it's the Lord who is detecting directly to him. Because he did write the Apocrypha explained, and then later on, when the Lord came to him, he did write the Apocrypha uh, revealed. So that means now, every word in Revelation has its spiritual meaning. We don't take the book literally. So that man is adding the book to the Bible? No, he's, he's just explaining. Mm. Explaining. Mm -hmm. You are watching the biggest <laughs> and the largest. This is not his topical. <laughs> the, these are randoms. Yeah. And I hear a seminar, you're trinity say, you're concept, no, you're you are shuffering them together. No, 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 because at times, even some say he went to Japan. Japan, you know? Of course, when you, when you check, you can find it somewhere, <laughs> somewhere, in, somewhere in Japan, they have this a shrine. If Jesus doesn't come to <laughs> explain himself, yeah, eh? so, uh, <laughs> I used, to, I, used to, I used to explain, I, I used to go <laughs> deep in and say, boy. How can you, woman, uh -huh, go to everywhere, uh -huh, die different, uh -huh, uh -huh, you, you, uh -huh. give him heaven, you different, see, different, you different. See, you see, you see, what so have we done to The you? explanation in, in, in the Japanese culture <laughs> is also somehow different. <laughs> About this same Jesus? About Jesus, that he came to live there. Why, why has he become so popular in the world? Yeah, because, because, you see, Jesus himself is the divine essence. You see, the divine knowledge that helps us to reach um, our, our, our spiritual awareness. Others have come, but them all, none of them will tell us that I am the light of the world. But the Lord was bold to tell us that I am the light of the world. So if I am bold to say something right now, and it trends, it becomes Nyamiya. If only, yes, if only you are the light. But from Genesis to Revelation, all the prophets and the prophetess, as I know, nobody have come out and say, I am the light of the world. So spiritually, when, when like, we are being educated when it comes to the Lord, then they will tell us that you remember when the Lord says he's the light of the world. Can you tell me somebody that is the light of the world? Can you uh, give me an example? Because the prophets has come, but none of them have really mm. told us that he is the light explain of the world. No, but we need to come to a conclusion. <laughs> that, oh, no, that's not your topic. We just want to know. You are, you are giving some kind of concept. Mm. Okay, it be, be, because you, s you made a statement that they need to unlearn, to relearn, of like course. they should be open of to open another, mind. which yeah. is yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but so we want to learn from you too. People come here, we learn from everybody, it's and great. we appreciate every knowledge, of little, course. big, small. Of course. We appreciate. So we need to ask you questions to be convinced of where you stand. So your topic is the end of the church. Yes. What is the church? W can you explain the meaning of a church? When they say church. Okay, church, on the spiritual level, church is an individual. Every individual is a church. When the word of God is in operation in you, you are gradually building a church in you. And then we have the external establishment where we do gather and then we hear the word of God. So we have the external church and then the internal church, being the man. Individually, we are all church. Okay, uh -huh. so in tree language, it's very nice. Very nice when we explain it in tree language, we say, oh, sorry. Again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you, you live according to the word of God. So it's like, oh, so for. Oh, so for you preach here. I'm sorry. 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 i am sorry i am sorry i like it's it's a, it's a he's a goddess who hypnotized people well have you heard about this no Let's but to me here. to me when when we come when we talk about church individually while the word of god is in operation in you you are building a church because mm -hmm. We are there. We are fantini. We are fantini. Fanti for me. We are not going to be in church. They don't hear. But how many are sorry? I sorry, they say. Nyamia se muna ba umuni ya Kenya on. We are sorry. Inti na ubisa wona na se nyamia yede ya uso ya fantini a hor or ya Jesus mau. A hor. Have you heard about him before? No, a hor. You don't know. You say you are fanti. You don't even know your history. You are chewing Bible. Oh, I know about my history, but 
is there is is, is he um a horror mm -hmm. a horror na yari ebi ba amfante for no so ena omu mm -hmm. na omu pe so save situation no no omu si obi a obe ba na ye kunu no or no na o de save si sa yari ena no ena eja a horror e ba ye nti obe jina ono omu chicha ne sa na owu ye that's why they do a horror ba you don't know this history, but you know how Jesus died in India and went to Japan and went to Tokyo to buy shoes. <laughs> but I have no idea. But even the, what you've said right now is, is, is because of the epidemic that took place. That's why such things happen. But then they are hurry out. Is that the right word? Uh, Ahor. Ahor. Mm. Was he preaching? Was he, was he going about doing the healing and all those things? Uh, so the preaching, not the saving. It's the no, preaching the, the that saving, matters. Uh -huh, but at the end of the day, we have that concept. BBC also be too no better or be mm -hmm. uh -huh. So if such a thing happened, then they knew that when such things happen, like oh, one person died, then there can be something like there, there, there can be a solution. Has, to has the Bible helped Africans? The Bible has really helped Africans somehow, but only because of our understanding of it. Because we, we, we feel like the white man has brought in something that has really suppressed what, who we are and what we believe in. But we need to go into it and see that the Bible is all about Africa. Because really? Of course. Do you know how the Bible got here? Can you tell us a, bis, a bit of history about how the Bible got here? Um, like through the... The our, first Bible, where he, where he got, like where he landed and what, how he came. Can you tell us? Through the, the slave ship that uh -huh. they, they, they brought in. The Bible, uh -huh. and then they brought in, um, I wouldn't say, but they brought in some other things like wine and all those things. But then they used the Bible as a form of bringing Christianity to Africans. And at the same time, too, they used the Bible in colonizing Africa. That is a fact. That so if you tell me the Bible is Africa and you are telling me the slave masters brought it to colonize us, how that something that comes from Africa can come from. Yeah, because a, of a, the printing. You see, because the of printing the, yes, because of the, the printing, because from the beginning, the Bible was not so secreted as we are having now. It's not so much known. It's only few people have the Bible. Even the Roman Catholic only have the Bible. They will read it and people, but gradually, Martin Luther and those people started that reformation so that the Bible can get into the hands of everybody. Okay, so people weren't much in tune with the bible like oh verse verse verse, okay, verse. let's leave this case mm -hmm. the, your topic is the end of the church yes. tell us mm -hmm. yes um the end of the church has come concerning the the, the differentiating between the doctrine that people are having in within the church and from my spiritual point of view or from the bible's point of view churches that had been established without them accepting the lord god jesus christ as jehovah that has taken fresh to dwell among them as God himself, delivering them as the, Bible, the, the Lord himself say, I'm, I'm your redeemer and there's no other God besides me. So when you don't believe that Jesus is God himself that have taken flesh to dwell among us, and then you believe that he is only the son but not the father, that means there gradually you are differentiating God and you are making like father here, son here, Holy Spirit here. That is what brings the church to an end. Because as Christians, we need not to argue about who God is and whom we are worshipping. You and I must come to that conclusion that oh, the Lord God Jesus is God. Oh yes, he's God. I believe he's God. He's God too. That's all. Not that's all, but with understanding. Okay. Uh -huh, with understanding, knowing that right after resurrection and then Thomas was in a doubt. And, but after he piercing his hand in, in, into the Lord's ribs, now he, he confers that, oh, the Lord Jesus Christ... He pierced his son he, in his ribs, in wanted to be sure. He didn't want course, to believe. Of course. He wanted to know. Of course, that's what I'm saying. To be sure. But then after he says, you are my Lord and my what? My God. So there, Christianity was formed in within the idea that the Lord Jesus Christ is God himself. It has nothing to do mm -hmm. with we differentiating him. But then we all know about church history. I'm talking about church history where the Roman Catholic, or to say the, 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 the Nancy grid that was, was presented, that divided God into three. And that has been able to, to say, go on from that 23, 25 AD as at now. So a lot of churches believe Jesus is God. Some say he's not God. So that means the church is what? The funda fundamental um, faith that we need to have in God is what? It's, it's really dissolving. So we need to re revive the church again so that 
we can have one universal church with one understanding so we can worship the God of heaven. You see, we I'm even can. getting confused because you say everybody to can pass any channel and get there. And now you are saying the, it depends the, upon the, the faith that you are in. If you are not a Christian, it's all, but when you are Muslim, you are not being condemned, or maybe say you are a Hare Krishna, you are an Enkis, you are a Buddha, you are a Hindu. So, what are the signs that shows that the, the end of the church is here? What is going to be? What is going to happen to the church itself? How are we going to experience this ending of the church? The end of church is the ending of the church has already is already in motion. Not like it's it's, it's it's already in motion. The church has already come to an end. Ah. Because what they are preaching now in the church, they only preach the literal without the internal. So that means when you look into Revelation, it says, "And I saw the old heaven passing away, and then a new heaven." restored in Revelation 21. So that means the old heaven is about the old teaching that we are having about the Lord. And even that one, it has been falsified. We have the first advent of the Lord, which tells us that the Lord God Jesus Christ he is God himself. But as time goes on, the doctrine changes. And people say, Jesus is not God. He is just a man like you and me. But it's not like that. He was also going through his, his trend of perfecting himself, perfecting his human self, to become what? The divine human. So if the church does not base its doctrine on the Lord and also have the internal sense of it, then that means we are still in the old church. We are still lingering around without we having a deeper understanding of the word. That's why I'm saying that the church has come to an end because from century to century, it's like the same gospel we've been preaching. But the gospel has changed. We are, we are in a dispensation that in the spiritual world, it's a new gospel that is being preached. And that gospel has to here which, on earth. which is the new gospel, which is which is the internal sense of the word, the spiritual understanding of the Bible. So that now you wouldn't take the Bible literally as a Christian. Everything that is in the Bible, mm. you need to have a spiritual understanding of it. Example, when Christ came and it was the first miracle that he did, it was about um, turning water into wine. We might read this thing literally, but when the angels and the spirit read this, they know, oh, what, is, what does the water correspond to? What does, what does water correspond to? Spiritually, water corresponds to divine truth. So that means Christ turned that literal or the natural understanding of the world or natural truth into spiritual truth. Okay? So the Bible is not on a literal sense again, but on the, on the, on the spiritual level now. So you don't just read the story and say, oh, he, he turned water into wine and that's it. He turned water from the literal sense into a spiritual sense. So now everybody can see that we are having a new doctrine. And since from then, we can read from the Bible that from then they went ahead to preach about a new gospel that was not of the old gospel. You see, so now the, 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 the new church has come. The new church has come to bring new truth to the world so that now the Christianity can have one oneness of God and also the internal sense because the literal sense becomes the foundation and then the internal sense becomes what we build upon we don't condemn the Bible like it's nothing this is the literal sense this is the foundation but then when we read the literal sense we need to go into it and have the spiritual understanding okay of it. so someone is watching us right now yeah. you have said a lot mm. the person would want to know now that the Bible the word of God is the literal sense how do we get to the the new church you are talking about. Yes. The new understanding is um, individually coming in to learn about, or if you have an idea, but this is a new revelation. So maybe if you don't know, but you can still come to church and learn. Or other pastors too might have the, the, the insight and then they'll gradually have to teach because what now they need to teach in the church is about the internal sense of the word. It's not about the literal. Because just imagine, the Bible is talking about the new Jerusalem ascending. Does it mean one day, as we are on this material plane, we are going to see a city descending? Are you be hearing this? And, and, and just imagine, city spiritually corresponds to what? Doctrine. So that means, this city that is descending, it means what? Spiritual doctrines that is going to empower the church again. And this is the internal sense of the word. But when you take the word literally, then that means one day you are expecting a, a holy city from heaven descending. But the holy city is what is being talked about, about the internal sense of the word. So that when you have the internal sense, now you can be able to conjoin yourself with the, with the old church or somebody that does not have this internal sense. So you, you become one. We don't don't worry, just teach us how to get be, go beyond the Bible, the literal book. 
the literal yes mm -hmm. to have the spiritual understanding i would say all these knowledge is firstly you need to have the knowledge of correspondence the knowledge of correspondence that's that's really it breaks the heart of the word with the knowledge of correspondence when we get it we want to know like we want to know you are advising us to mm -hmm. tell us um, if somebody do, they are working you know be and here what was our man bro for a short oh be and take right last one you are betting tea yeah, it could be beyond the literal book, mm -hmm. the Bible. Yes. So give us the steps. Let that be your first, last words until you tell our classroom who teach you and my Aka Bible. Sir, mm -hmm. the literal understanding is there, mm -hmm. but the spiritual understanding mostly works on the on the level of correspondences. So the knowledge of correspondence is, is about everything that is around this. So I wouldn't specifically say um, this or that, like example, your hair means truth. Your eyes misunderstanding. So if you are saying something to somebody, oh, me who niya watcher, muwa what you say. Your nose corresponds to your perception, your ears to obedience, your mouth testifying of truth, your neck connection of of the divine love and wisdom that operates in you. Your heart means your will. Your your right hand means your love. Your left hand means your understanding. Your legs corresponds to the literal form of understand your literal form of life that you are living. But when you come to the knowledge of correspondence, as I've already said, it comprises of everything that is in, in the natural world so then the knowledge is i can't say i'm i'm teaching it all here if people are willing and they want to learn yeah they can come to church and then you are calling people to church of course they the need same to church in. they need to come because this church is the is the, is the, i would say is a new church that is coming to subdue the old church i wouldn't subdue like it's bringing forth in the new church because anybody that is in the new church is of the new heaven, not of the old heaven. So when people oh die, my, oh my old testament. Now mm move -hmm. my new testament. Mm -hmm. Say my old church. Must have my new. Are they? Of course. Are they? I am with them. That be. But Nini has said, "Ain't you see? Because when you know old, just imagine. So when you know old, old church in Moa. Or can buy one baby no say ah. Na kim kwa oba no ko ware no ofi no ba. Eh, ebi o ya tewa platform is ofi 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 ofi. Enso no ofi. That be. Oba no ofi. So. Cain, whom no general madie, Abel was <laughs> general madie. Abel represents the works of charity, mm -hmm. and Cain represents the works of what faith. We shouldn't live by faith alone, but it's only through mm. charity that we can be saved. Our time is done. So oh. your last were like in one minute, advice to the public and your only your social media handles. Okay, I would say it's a it's a it's a deeper um, advantage for us to be here talking about God, but I would say. At the end of the day, Christians have to understand that the Bible is not of a literal sense. We have a deeper understanding or a spiritual understanding in it. And this is what we need to seek. When we are part of, you are part of this new church or new understanding, that means you shifted your, your mental state from the old teachings into a new form of teaching. Okay? And then when you are baptized also in the new church or part of this new church, even when you die and you read the word of spirit, you are part of the new heaven and not of the old heaven. We have, mm -hmm. we have the old heaven and we have the new heaven since um the year as according to our earthly calendar 1770 1770 in the spiritual world god started creating a new heaven and then the whole of the heavens is being taught about the lord be the only god to be saved but if you have any other form of doctrine you are not condemned but in the spiritual world you'll be given an advantage to learn Mm -hmm. uh -huh. This man loves old and new, Papa. Oh, Every is old and new. Bibi old and new. Of course, because this new teachings is, is going to empower okay. us to Your have a better media. understanding. Social media. Or new church, you can, new church convention, you can look up on Facebook, have the calling. The calling on Facebook, there we have knowledge about it. Or you can go to the Of the Left Eye, which is also part of the new church that is in America, that we have this teaching that you can also have. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. We do appreciate. Ebusia, say you have an life. No, what your comment session? Yeah, now, but now only nanya one on one. Now, we be some questions. Ne, ni a kekere kamu. No, the concept in everything is new, new heavy, new. And chebi a wukra be a new you and the other one. And now, what let's say, baby, all can now me ye me ni me tie pa ye we need what it represent. Uh, education uh, minister, if you can stop the abebe and the lobsters, any a yadu lena or more lebo no na di nipa taleho na ya lebo or mo in this manner, it will do us a lot of good. Thank you so much for watching the biggest and the largest. I am always Labraska the Sun Goddess.